Welcome all. So today we're gonna go ahead and begin a new chapter. So uh, in this chapter we will talk about some, I will basically be, dem be demonstrating some more advanced examples. So we will talk a little bit about the inclusion of other libraries, what that actually is and what that stands for, logical operators, relational operators, and then finally we will dive into the if-else statements, conditional execution, and operand combining, and the combination of operands. So you will see what I mean by this soon enough, but for the time being, let's go ahead and begin with the inclusion of other libraries. I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly create a project. Hopefully you know this, you know how to do this by now. Uh, project title, how shall we name this? Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm just going to name it Chapter 3. You can name it however you like. I've just told you the list of subjects. So name it, give it, give it, an appro give it a convenient and appropriate name for you so you can come back later to the code and know instantly what it is. I'm just going to go ahead and click Next, Finish. Thank you very much. Main, I'm gonna delete this. I know I can change the default thing that the uh, code blocks outputs, but I'm a I'm a, I'm a very lazy person in this regard, so it's actually easier for me to. I've deemed it easier to delete it every time as opposed to permanently change it. Anyway, not that not uh, not that used to using code blocks, but it is a good ID for learning. Anyway, so let's go ahead and see uh, how to include libraries, as well as the basics, uh, well, as well as as well as some other basics in regard to that. So we've already seen this. I mean, nothing new, right? Include IO stream. So we've basically included a library. So when including these libraries, we must place them in lesser than and greater than signs. So in between them, we basically just include a library. This is a library, what I've selected. Down below, you can go ahead and type in a string. So string, same, again, no big deal, no difference. Anyway, in C++, there is no need for adding a .h extension on system libraries, which is the case in C. So, I don't know, in C, for example, you would have something like this. Include and you could have, well, time, oops, time dot h. So this is still, this, this would still, this should still be valid here. However, this is not something that we do in C++ in general, not like this anyway. If you have these things, you would, uh, yep, my apologies, you would actually put this into quote marks, and that would be time.h, like that. So, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna do that. Now, not yet, and not in such a way. Also, because C++ is compatible with C, there is a special syntax and naming convention for including libraries. And you would, you would uh, just use the C name of the library and without using the extension. For example, I don't know, this is this is what you would do without the quote marks or without pretty much without pretty much anything in C++ we can we can just do this. I've shown you time a moment ago and we would do this include C time. There you go. So that's how you would include time without without actually going without actually doing this. So this would be uh, this would be a C format, and this would be a C plus plus format of the same library. So no big deal. In general, the rule the rule of the thumb, so to say, if you have a library in C and if you would like to use that same library in C++, if it exists, I mean, it's compatible. So there is a compatibility between the two and you should generally be able to use it. You would just 
use it like this. So include. And if the name of the library, let's just invent something and say abc.h. So this is in C. If it's like this in C, it would just you would just need to do some slight alterations and make it C++ compatible. So you would just place C in front of this and you would delete the dot H. So this would be the C syntax of the same library, abc.h, and it doesn't exist. Well, maybe it does, I don't know, but I've basically randomly placed letters here. And if you would like to include that same library in a C++ program, well, you would just, you would just place C in front of the name of the library, I'm sorry, God, you would just place C in front of the name of the library and you would remove the dot H. That's quite literally it. There is uh, no, nothing, nothing too complicated, nothing too complicated about it. Anyway, here's a, here's just a few examples, no big deal. So include std lib dot H. This is C and include C std lib. So this is C++. Down below, we can type in include time.h, as I stated before, and up above you have C time. So you have time.h, which is C, and C time, which is C++. Now, there are also non-system libraries that can be included by stating the path of the file inside the double quotations. So for example, you could have this. Include, uh, sorry, quote marks, some lib.h. Now this is not going to compile because some lib.h doesn't exist. And if it does exist, then okay. But if it does not exist, then it's not going to compile. This means that the library some lib.h is located in the same directory as the file that includes it. If this is not the case, so if this is not the case, if this, uh, li if this library file is not exactly in the same folder, you see I have chapter three here, and it says here chapter three, okay, main. So if it's not in this folder, if that dot h, what did I name it? Some lib. If some lib dot h is not located here, the program will not be, it will not run. It will not compile. That would be a major problem. However, if it's not located there, but if it's located elsewhere on the system, you are given an ability to specify an absolute path. So path, to the file and you can specify an absolute path and then it will run, then it will be combined. So there's just one more thing that I would briefly like to mention, perhaps not the most important thing of them all. It's basically what happens when we include the same library multiple times. For example, if I have included string here and I I don't know, include it again. So include, include string, so like this. In that case, compile will ignore every other include except the very first one that was made. So it's a, it's a very wasteful and shameful programming practice, but no big deal. Uh, it happens to, happens, to, happens to everyone from time to time, so don't worry about it. It's not a major problem. It's actually not a problem at all. As I said, compiler will ignore every other include except the very first one that was made. So we have learned uh, the, the way the compatibility in between C and C++ works. We have also learned that you have system libraries and non-system libraries. For non-system libraries, unless the library is in that exact same folder, uh, it will not run unless the full path to that library is given. And this is how you would, this is the syntax for including non-system libraries. And up above you have syntax for including 
system libraries as well. Uh, this is for C and this is for C++ again, C, uh, C++, etc. I bid you farewell and we're gonna go ahead and jump into the next tutorial where we will go ahead and take a look at the types of operators.